Coming up, we bake our way to a healthier lifestyle. Find new ways to give old clothes a new life. And we calculate ways to look hip. All of this and more on the next edition of From, From the, the Core. Core. Welcome to From the Core. I'm Charity. And I'm Dolores. And we are part of the 2014 Mayor's Youth Corps and From the Core production crew. We're delighted to be here. This is going to be a fun show. Definitely. First up, our lead story. Most of us can think of a time when we had to decide if we wanted the last cookie in the cookie jar or a banana as a quick snack. FTC reporter Michelle is going into the kitchen to whip up some healthy yet tasty snacks. Hey everyone, today I invited my friend over to make some treats, which are not only good for you, but they're also really easy to make. Hey Melanie, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. So what are we making today? I know you're into track, so how about some homemade energy bars and a delicious chocolatey snack? That sounds great, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is preheat the oven to 375 degrees, so that when it comes time to put the batter in the oven, it'll be at the right temperature. Next, what I'm gonna do is spray the muffin pan with some non-stick spray. This way, when we take the energy bars out, they won't stick to the pan. While Michelle is getting everything prepped, I will put here in this bowl all of the dry ingredients. One and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour, two cups of rolled oats, two-thirds cups of brown sugar, a half cup of raisins, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We'll make sure to mix this very well. Now we're gonna add the wet ingredients, which is going to be one and a half cups of plain yogurt and a fourth of a cup of canola oil. Melanie, you know what? I think these are going to turn out really good. I agree. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to take some of these home. They'll be great snacks on days that I have track. That's a great idea. So now we're just going to put one and a half tablespoons of the batter into each of the muffin cups. Now we're just going to put this in the oven for 15 minutes. Can I take that back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now for the nuts. Now for the chocolate. Chocolate nut clusters, that is. These are so simple, and they satisfy your craving for something salt and sweet. I'm going to walk over here for this part of the demonstration. OK. And a great trick when you're melting chocolate is to use a double boiler. All a double boil really is is putting a pot or a bowl on top of a pot of boiling water. It's important to constantly stir the chocolate so it will melt evenly and not burn. If you don't have a double boiler, don't worry. You can put the chocolate in the microwave in increments of 30 seconds. Remember, it's very important to continue stirring the chocolate so it doesn't burn. Now we're going to pour the chocolate into 1 4 cup of walnuts. You can use any kind of cut nuts you would like, but today we're going to use walnuts. And nuts are great because they're filled with antioxidants, vitamins, and lots of protein. And if you're allergic to nuts, don't worry. Any kind of fruit dipped in chocolate tastes amazing. All that's left to do now is spoon this out onto parchment paper and place it in the fridge. Melanie, I know you were looking forward to making those, so I made some before you came. Oh, Michelle, you shouldn't have. I know. <laughs> and I also made some energy bars, too. This looks fantastic. I think we should try one. I agree. Mm. They're delicious. I know, right? Thank you so much for coming over today and helping me make these. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had a lot of fun. We should do it again sometime. I agree. <laughs> for From the Core, I'm Michelle. That sure looked good, Dolores. Who knew that making healthy snacks could be so easy and look so good? I hear ya. When it comes to storing these amazing snacks, you can't go wrong with putting them in a plastic bag and putting them into the freezer for later. I think I might have to whip some of those up when I get home. <laughs> will you freeze some for me? I sure will. Right after this break, we'll show you how you can take old clothes and turn them into something new.
Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to From the Core. A great way to go green is to recycle. Cans, plastic bottles, and even license plates can have a second life. Did you know that you can recycle clothes too? FTC reporter Tony shows us how to make old clothes new again. When it comes to finding a hip new fashion, the Salvation Army is a great place to go. Here, old is new again. Chris Pluccino discusses the new increase in teen shopping at the Salvation Army. Well, I'd say in the last few years we've seen a large increase in the number of young people shopping in our stores. Uh, we've noticed that they've been coming in for uh, name brand fashions, you know, maybe uh, slightly used, um, some of them brand new that we have donated to us, and we've noticed them shopping for, you know, clothes, shoes, even uh, furniture and things like that. Chelsea Hawks talks about why she enjoys shopping at places like the Salvation Army. I guess it's easier to find stuff than, than at the mall because at the mall, like one, it's more expensive and two, it's just, it's a lot more fun because they have a variety of different brands and stuff. So it's just easier to find something that you really want to look for. So. Look, I have a great outfit for an affordable price, and I even got something for a special project. Now I'm in the studio, and remember that shirt I got at Salvation Army? Well, I'm actually making it into a necklace. It's really easy. All it takes is a ruler and a pair of scissors. Here's the shirt now, actually, and as you can see, I have already made some alterations. What I've done so far is I've cut strips about one inch wide. You can make them thinner or thicker depending on how you want the necklace to turn out. Now, once you have your strips, you want to hold on to them by the seams in both hands and just stretch them like this until the, they start to curl around and they get smaller. Now, after you've stretched it, you want to lay it down so that a seam is on either side. Um, and see, I don't really like this strand as much. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it and save it for later. Now, you can keep stretching strands until you get about the size you want. But I think I like this size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it so that the seams are in each of my hands. And I'm just going to figure eight twist it and put it all in one of my hands. Once you have the uh, strands in one hand, uh, remember that strand I didn't like? Well, now you're going to use it to loop it and just wrap it around. Keep wrapping it until you're all out. And once you're completed with that, it should look something like this. The really great part about it is that you don't have to tie a knot at the end. You can just tuck it right under there. And this looks so great, I'm actually going to put it on right now. <laughs> um, and when you're finished with the necklace, you can make bracelets out of the rest of the shirt. For more detailed instructions on how to make the necklaces and more information on how to make the bracelets, go to our website. What's really great about this is that you can create something new, unique, and cool out of a t-shirt that you got at Salvation Army or from your closet. Happy accessorizing. That was great. I'll definitely try out some of those ideas on my own. On the other side of this break, we're going to find out what one Mayor's Youth Corps member thinks is a good idea for an app. OK, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Hi, 
I'm Sophia and this is Civics 101. The city of Tampa recently had a birthday. Do you know how old Tampa is? Well, we'll find out right after the break. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Happy birthday, dear Tampa. Tampa is 126 years old. Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon arrived in Florida in 1513. But Tampa really began its development in 1845 after it became part of the United States. Henry B. Plant's railroad extension to the Hillsborough River, the discovery of phosphates, and the arrival of the cigar industry helped draw new attention to Tampa. The city of Tampa has come a long way from a mere 974 people in 1850 to over 350,000 people. It's no wonder why today Tampa is one of the largest cities in Florida. I'm Sophia, and thanks for watching this month's Civics 101. We're back, and fashion is still on our minds. Continuing with the topic of clothing, Mayor's Youth Corps member Jenna Hart came up with the idea for an app that would help determine if an outfit is appropriate for a desired occasion. Being a teenager is stressful, and we are often judged based on our appearance. It is difficult to keep up with fashion trends along with everything else we have going on. So, I would like to have an app that would determine if my choice of clothing is socially appropriate. This app would allow me to choose a general range of events I am planning on attending. For example, if I were going to school, I would just scroll down until I saw the title, School, and then I would select it. After selecting the event, I would take a picture of the outfit I planned on wearing, and it would automatically determine if the outfit was suitable or not. If the verdict for wearing the outfit was no, then I would know to choose another outfit. This application would not only have the ability to determine if my clothing choices are considered up to standard, but would also have the ability to select other outfits in my wardrobe that might be more appropriate. I would just take a photo of the clothing in my closet and the app would save it to memory. If a time came when I needed an outfit for a special occasion, I would just go to the app, select the event, and the perfect outfit would be suggested. This app would not only be useful to teenagers, but to people of all ages. We cannot all be fashion experts, but with the help of an app like this, we could look fashionable wherever we go. That was an amazing idea for an app. Not only does it help relieve the stress that comes with trying to put an outfit together, but you'll also know that it will be appropriate for the occasion. That's so true, Dolores. Now time for shoutabouts. Today we'd like to shout about two ex very extraordinary boys named Bryson and Blake Poole. These two boys are helping to fight amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. They started Kids Quest, which is helping to raise donations and find a cure. That's awesome. Great work. Keep it up, guys. We would also like to shout about Middleton's three FTC teams, Minotaur, Maelstrom, and Masquerade, competed against the top 24 teams in Florida at the FTC state competitions, held at Embry-Riddle University at Daytona Beach on February 1st, 2014. They each placed in the top 10 slots and will go on to compete in the Super Regional Competition in San Antonio, Texas. This marks the third consecutive year Middleton is placed in the state championships. Middleton has a long history of dominating in robotics in the state, national, and global level. Their efforts have certainly paid off. Way to go, Middleton. Another one of our shoutabouts is about the Hillsborough High School Science Olympiad team. On January 18th, they placed 15 out of 18 events, resulting in their overall win in the competition. They brought home a rather large trophy and a total of 31 medals. Wow. The team who attended it consisted of 10, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Congratulations to the Hillsborough Science Olympiad team, and we wish you luck in future competitions. Finally, we would like to feature one of our own, Kashav. Recently, Kashav competed in the Mu Alpha Theta January Regional Competition at King High School, participating in the Algebra II division. He placed first in his region and sixth in the state out of 466 other participants with a score of 89. The Mu Alpha Theta National Organization describes himself as a national high school two-year College Mathematics Honor Society with 99,000 student members in more than 2,000 schools. Thank you once again for tuning in to From the Core. Remember, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, always do your part. Tune in next time for another episode of From, From the, the Core. Core.